Okay, so I want to just respond to President Trump's speech on immigration. I believe his speech was given in Phoenix, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, it wasn't announced where it was. Um, I'm just going on that because the news network covering it was a local Phoenix news network. Um, so if it's somewhere else, that's my mistake. Anyway, President Trump um, was talking about immigration. Now, this is significant because I'm now talking about President Trump on immigration, not candidate Trump on immigration. And there is a marked difference. Um, I have to say the speech was about 10, 15 minutes long, came across as quite diplomatic, presidential, and certainly not typical of one of Trump's campaign speeches. This speech was more conciliatory, more balanced, still to the point, still keeping on Trump's main campaign issues, but it was more presidential, so that's good to see. Um, it was far less inflammatory and more in my opinion, more diplomatic. But I want to talk about some of the issues that Donald Trump was discussing. Now, obviously, I'm an outsider. People might say, well, why, why are you getting involved? You're British. What's, what's this got to do with you? Of course, on a personal level, it's got nothing to do with me. It doesn't affect me. But I think immigration is an issue, a subject that is relevant all over the world. Um, it's certainly relevant in my country. So it is interesting to see the the arguments and the position that the world's biggest country um, in terms of um, the world's most economically powerful country puts forward on this very important issue. Firstly, I um, on the speech itself, I'll just cover that first in some of my general thoughts. What President Trump done was uh, focus a lot on victims of what he considers open border immigration now. Whether that's quite a fair description or not is up for debate. But let's just say that um, Trump is focusing a lot on those people whose lives have been changed by, frankly, illegal immigration. I don't know what the levels are compared to the end of former presidencies. I don't think there's any evidence, particularly, that it's much worse now than it has ever been before. Nevertheless, it is an important issue. So don't want to get into statistics like this is the number that came in last year or this year, because frankly, I don't know. And also sometimes statistics are not always reliable. But suffice to say, it is an important issue. And there are currently, as I understand it, estimates of 11 million um, illegal migrants living in the United States. Now, that is a lot of people, even in a country with over 300 million people. 11 million people is a lot of people. To put that in context, that's the equivalent of the entire population of Belgium. So it's a lot of people. It's, uh, it's a big proportion of people. Um, I think part of the problem is, uh, like I say, this speech came across as very presidential. I think part of the problem that Donald Trump faces is that he's sort of his own worst enemy. And this is something I hope his advisors will kind of make obvious to him words have consequence and it's all very well saying that you're not politically correct and you tell it like it is but sometimes trump has frankly got himself into um the deep end and it has frankly been his own fault there has been certainly media bias as i discussed in my previous video but during his campaign when trump said that the mexicans are rapists or criminals but some of them are good people the problem with putting that caveat afterwards is the media being the way they are only pick up on the line the Mexicans are rapists and criminals. Now Trump did say not all of them afterwards, but the problem was that doesn't dampen down the inflammatory way in which such rhetoric is taken. So I do think that he is partly responsible for his own negative reputation, well largely responsible. Um, although media bias definitely plays into that as well. So that's something President Trump needs to bear in mind, that when you make, okay, I get it, um, political correctness is not honest, but I think it's possible to be honest without being inflammatory, and um, he hasn't always done that, so it is good to see him to take a more presidential approach to this. Um, in fact, in the speech, he specifically said our Mexican friends, and he was very careful 
not to vilify the Mexican people. Um, one issue that I do want to raise is that on the immigration issue, I do think there's been a lot of politics at play. I think there's been politics on both sides. Certainly Trump has played a populist line, although there's a lot of valid points he raises. But frankly, Mexico's current and previous administrations have also played politics. Um, Vicente Fox was talking tough. Philip Calderon was talking tough. And current President Peña Nieto was talking tough. But what was interesting was on the day of Trump's inauguration, President Peña Nieto sent him congratulations. So I think behind the scenes, both Donald Trump and Enrique Peña Nieto full, know full well that they have to work together. In other words, they say one thing to their supporters, they will say another thing directly to each other. That's politics. I, I would also say that Mexico's position needs to be scrutinized a bit more because it's hypocritical. This is a simple fact. Um, to the south of Mexico, there are poor Latin American countries like Guatemala, Honduras, where people flee drug violence, where they flee very high crime rates, especially in the case of Honduras. Now, when they go into Mexico, do you think it's a case that they simply can go in and there's no sort of policy that Mexico has in place? Of course not. Mexico arguably has a much harder immigration line than the United States does, or had, I should say. So I think it's a bit hypocritical of the federal government in Mexico to be pointing the finger at the Trump administration and saying, oh, how dare you be so racist, when they're doing, if not exactly the same thing, even more of a hardline approach. That's profoundly hypocritical. The Trump actually made quite a smart speech here because what he he said it in such a way as to say, well, wait a second, my policy is actually going to benefit Mexico as well because it will help you to deter illegal immigration from the south, i.e. from Honduras, from Guatemala. So Trump was actually playing quite a clever um, line with that. He was basically saying that you don't need to see this as being entirely hostile to Mexico. In some ways, it will help Mexico. Now, the wall. He has again reiterated that this is going to happen. I personally am not so convinced by this idea. And it isn't just because of connotations that that's what authoritarian regimes put up. The first most obvious is East Berlin. Rather, it's I just don't know if it is practically possible. So even if you if you believe it is necessary and morally justified, it's a huge engineering project. Huge. It would be the second biggest wall in the world, unless I'm mistaken, after the Great Wall of China. Um, we're talking, I think it's 1,700 miles of border. There's mountains, there's rivers. So the idea of having this wall along the line, money, I don't know what the total cost would be. It would certainly be a huge cost. I suppose President Trump will argue that the, the cost is worth the end result of reducing illegal immigration. And if that has proven to be a success, then he might be in a strong position to make that argument. I am not sure that the wall is the best idea. Having said that, if the problem is as bad as President Trump implies that it is, it may well be that those of us on the outside who are judging this are not appreciating what people who live on the border have to go through. Now, he done something quite sentimental. He he read out the name of parents who had lost their children to gang violence coming from illegal immigration. Now, what was significant about this was I noticed some of the names he read out, certainly on the surface, appeared to be Hispanic American. In other words, Donald Trump isn't saying this is the white people versus immigrants. He's saying this is an issue that impacts all Americans. And that is true. I think one of the biggest mistakes the Democrats and the left make is pretending that there are not problems. Because they are so keen to say, well, it's not fair to demonize all immigrants, fair enough, that they overlook the fact that actually there are bad immigrants. There are people who want to go into the United States to push their filthy trade and to do bad things that harms American society and Mexican society for that matter. I mean, a few years back, thousands of Mexicans took to the streets of Mexico City to protest against drug violence. The Mexican drug war has claimed over 100,000 lives. Most of them are from internal fighting, but many civilians have also died. 
So this is a very serious problem. That's not to say the whole of Mexico is a war zone. It varies from state to state. Mexico still gets tourists. It's a big country, so it's not like the whole country is a war zone. But drug violence has made Mexico, parts of Mexico, one of the most dangerous countries in the world. And I think it's hard to dispute that. I heard at one point um, rich Mexicans were actually implanting microchips under their skin so that if they were kidnapped, they could be tracked down. That's how bad the situation is. And these drug cartels are as sadistic, as brutal and as vicious as ISIS, the sort of things that they're prepared to do. And it isn't just against rival drug um, gang members. They are prepared to harass small town mayors, very brave people who in some cases pay with their lives for standing up to these folks. And so when people talk about immigration, I do think that the left is guilty of underplaying the crime aspect and being too politically correct and simply accepting that there is actually a problem going on here. Um, Does that mean that it's only immigrants commit crime? Of course not. Of course there's Americans that commit crime, American citizens, including white American citizens. But I think it is legitimate to say that there are people coming into this country that don't want to integrate, they don't want to contribute anything to society, society, and they are endangering American lives. This is irrefutable. The drug gangs have even operated as far north as Montreal and Vancouver. So this is a very real problem. And it's all very well if you're living in Vermont or New York, but I think for people living in the border states, they might see a different perspective. Um, So Donald Trump read a list of these parents who had lost their children to to gang violence. And, you know, it was interesting that they seemed to be a diverse group of people that he was reading out. In other words, this impacts all Americans. He also mentioned the, um, the angel mothers, I believe the group is called, who have campaigned for something to be done to end this violence. And I think it is fair to say a tougher immigration policy would at least partly play out. Also, and this is very important, this shouldn't be a case of seeing it as the US government versus immigrants. Because, what, again, one of the things that irritates me about the Democrats and the left in general is they have portrayed Donald Trump's position as being Trump versus immigration. It's Trump versus illegal immigration. They always just deliberately ignore that fact. So, of course, if you portray a leader to be against all immigrants, it's very easy to portray that person as a racist, as a demagogue, etc. Now, like I say, Trump has said some very unhelpful and inflammatory things. So I'm not saying that he isn't partly responsible for the reputation that he has. But when you look deeper into it, that has been his position. And I admit I was somewhat wrong in, I interpreted him as an outright demagogue, but it's. It's a question of the rhetoric versus the reality. And I hope Trump will adopt a more presidential approach to this. But I really don't see why it is so terrible that the head of state of any country insists that there is some level of control. Now, that's not to say that it would be entirely the case that the Democrats believe in no control. I don't think that would be fair. But they certainly give the impression that if you question immigration, you're a horrible racist. We get the same bullshit in the UK from, in my opinion, the regressive left. People who give the impression that they really do believe in having no borders. If that is your position, you're not humane. You're an idiot. Okay, there's nothing humane from that for anyone. It's not even humane towards immigrant towards immigrants because it ultimately puts them in a position where they then become scapegoated. So... The left wing approach to immigration of it being of having no issue whatsoever with unlimited immigration is just totally reckless and stupid. Every country in the world has a right to have some control on its borders. This doesn't mean countries should pull up a drawbridge and become hermit kingdoms like North Korea. Of course not. We do live in an interconnected world and in my view, people should have the opportunity to travel, to seek, to seek opportunity if they contrib- contribute something to the country that they're going to and if they play by the rules. But from a point of view of law-abiding immigrants, and this is another part of the equation, their point of view is, wait a second, I went through the process, I played by the rules, 
You know, I don't break the law. And yet there's people who have chosen to break the law are basically being let off the hook. So this isn't even about Trump's opinion. It's also about the position of those people whose voices are not being heard. And I think the Democrats haven't listened. It's one reason why they lost the election. Now, in terms of the vote rigging claims, I don't know enough about that. If it does transpire that a lot of Hillary Clinton's votes came from illegal immigrants, that is a very serious issue. Because currently the perception is she got a massive majority in the popular vote. And she did. That's the facts. But where that massive majority came from, well, it's anyone's guess. I, I take the position that every country has a right to have some control on its borders. That isn't just a right. It's actually a responsibility. It's common sense. And this is what irritates me about the left. They can't seem to understand that. I should say some on the left, the regressive left. They don't seem to understand that. For them, it's like, oh, if you talk about immigration, you're a racist. Now, to me, if, if someone had lost their son or daughter to gang violence from an illegal immigrant who came over the border, knowingly breaking the law of the country they were coming to, and they came just to further MS-13 or other gangs, I would feel absolutely furious at that reaction that if I raise concern about that, I'm a racist. This is perverse. So for people experiencing that problem in states like Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, Southern California, I, I totally understand their frustration with the left-wing point of view. Because the left-wing point of view is basically black and white. Oh, you either support immigration or you're a racist. Now, the, the caveat that they always put in is America is a country built by immigrants as part of our DNA. And that is absolutely true. Every American pretty much has that, including Donald Trump, who is of Scots descent. But there is a very big difference between the America of the 1870s, when the population was 100 million, and bear in mind was a massive jump from the time of the Civil War to the 1890s, to let's say around the time of the McKinley and Roosevelt administrations, when it really there was a population explosion to the America of today, when now the situation is that America is the world's third most populous country. Now, parts of America still remain very rural, and it's certainly not overly dense, overly populated in terms of density, but the population centers are not evenly distributed. So there are parts of Texas, California, and New York, and the Northeast that are densely populated. There's large chunks of the Midwest and the West that are not. So I don't think the issue that is that the US is overpopulated, but I would make the argument that you cannot compare the America of the 19th century to America today. So I don't think it's good enough just saying, oh, uh, well, we've always been a nation of immigrants, therefore let's have unlimited immigration. Certainly immigrants have contributed a massive, massive amount to American life. And anyone that says they didn't is a fool. And Trump should also condemn anti-immigrant racism, genuine racism, unreservedly. So if there are examples of racist attacks happening, he should unreservedly condemn that. So his side also has responsibility in that regard. But looking at the speech, I really cannot take major issue with anything that he said. He also spent a lot of time praising his uh, new Secretary for Homeland Security, John Kelly. Um, in the end of the day, if someone chooses to break the law of the country that they're going to, my sympathy is somewhat limited. Certainly, I understand that there is this issue of families getting broken apart. But Trump also made a fair point. What about those who've lost family members altogether from gang violence? What about them? So there really is two sides to this. And I think too many on the left and on the Democratic side, are too quick to shout racism. They're too quick to dismiss these very valid issues that there are bad people coming over the border. Yes, there's bad people who are white American citizens as well. No one's suggesting that there aren't. But the, talking about immigration is not racist, and it really, really frustrates me when people insist that it is. So, you know, the left can, can shout about Trump being a demagogue, but if they're not willing to have dialogue, 
If they're not willing to discuss these problems in an adult manner, i.e. without just name calling, then, you know, we're going to see years of partisan nonsense. Now, Donald Trump has said he wants to be a president for all Americans, and granted that may look almost comical given the divisive nature of his campaign. And his campaign was very divisive. I don't think even his most hardcore supporters can deny that. Well, they would. Um, You know, I'm just trying to be fair here. I'm not a Trump supporter, but looking at that speech, I can't really take issue with anything we're saying. Although I do think the wall, I think presidents promise a lot when they get in. Obama repeatedly said he was going to close down Guantanamo. It never happened. Um, Trump is repeatedly saying he's building this wall. Well, I think that's going to be problematic. I don't think that's going to be done in his first term. And if he gets a second term, it might be done. But it's a huge, huge engineering project, even for someone with the business knowledge that he has. That's I don't think this is going to happen anytime soon. You know, leave aside the right and wrong. I'm just talking pragmatism here. So anyway, I'll leave it there. I spoke a bit longer than I intended, but the issues are very important. Um, If you are from Mexico or Latin America and you want opportunities in the US, I wish you all the best. But you have to play by the rules. Just like if an American citizen wanted to work in Mexico, they would have to abide by rules. Okay, so why is it always the focus on the US? It is true that Mexico economically is not as powerful as the US, not even close. But Mexico is not a dirt poor third world country. It's a middle income country. It's a relatively powerful country in its own right, certainly regionally. So let's just get away from this idea of the big Goliath versus little David. It is not that simple. And Mexico, frankly, has to look at its own hypocrisy on the immigration issue. And also, uh, a final word. Um, when I see large groups of people protesting Trump's immigration policy, when they wave the Mexican flag in the United States, and when they you know, surround Trump supporters and spit in their face and throw things at them, and I've seen this, that isn't going to win any moral argument. That just makes you look like a bunch of thugs. And to me, that's the epitome of Cardiff to gang up on someone. And I would say exactly the same if a group of Trump supporters rounded up on a protester. Um, There has to be respect on both sides. And I'm going to make videos about the current situation regarding left versus right. Because this is very, very important. But basically, that's it. I believe every country in the world has a right to have some control on its borders. Um, The US is no different. I don't think this is Trump pulling up a drawbridge. I think it's just a case of saying there is a problem here and we need to take control of it. If I'm wrong about anything in this video, please point it out. Please tell me where I'm wrong. I don't know all the issues and I may well be wrong in some of the things I'm hypothesizing and speculating and commenting on. But I think these are very reasonable points. It's not about being against all immigration. It's simply saying play by the rules of the country you're coming from. If you choose to break the rules by going in illegally, that's not exactly a mark of respect to your host nation. If I went to a country illegally, I couldn't complain about anything that followed. Why is that so hard to understand? So, you know, when the Democrats brought up immigrant children and, you know, demonized Trump and demonized the Republicans for dividing families, they conveniently forget to mention that the parents are responsible for dividing those families in the first place by choosing to go into the US illegally. It's not complicated in that sense. Okay, let me know your thoughts and thanks for watching.